Am I the asshole for asking my neighbor to move his car off my drive? Me, 25F, and my boyfriend, 28M, moved into our, rented, house about eight months ago. It's on a terraced street but our house is semi-detached and the space between our house and our neighbor to the left is just wide enough for a driveway with a garage door. We like the driveway because the area can be quite competitive for parking spaces. The driveway isn't wide enough for my BF's van but my car will fit just fine. When we first moved in I started to park on the driveway, but had numerous instances of people parking over the drive, leading to a couple of cancelled doctor's appointments at the last minute. It really got on my nerve, but we politely asked people to move if we caught them, left a few post-its on cars and put a sign up. Things improved and as a standard I park on the drive, but if I have something important to do I'll park on the street just in case. A few days ago, I noticed my neighbor's car pull up in front of the driveway. I wasn't parked behind the garage door at the time but as a standard practice I'll nip out and say something like, if you're going to be here for a while, could you park elsewhere as we use the driveway? If someone says they'll be on their way soon I don't usually care, and the only time it's ever been a problem is when people get rude about it. It's worth noting that the street was pretty empty at the time so it parking spaces weren't scarce, plus the other person that lives in neighbor's house has parked his van over the drive repeatedly, even after we've left notes. The conversation went something like, me, M, hi there. Would you mind maybe parking somewhere else as the driveway is in use? Neighbor, N, well you're not parked there now, and anyway it's not my fault that I can't find parking with your car and van on the street. M, I'm not really sure that's relevant. There's a dropped curb and you're not supposed to park over someone's driveway. Besides, if I have an appointment it's not worth being blocked in. N, well you can't have everything you want. If I can't find a parking space because of your big van then I just park where I can. M. Again, not really relevant. There's a sign up. Plus we've left notes on your van before so it's not like you're not aware of the issue. N. Well it's not my van, it's my nephew's. M. Regardless, you must be aware of it and still choose to park over it regardless. Whether or not it seems fair we pay rent which includes the rent of the driveway. If I didn't have to worry about people blocking me and you'd find me parking on the street a lot less often. At this point he's just mumbling swear words and turning away so I call after him and say that I've taken a picture of the car and I'll contact the council if it continues to be a problem. Reason why I might be the asshole. I feel that the driveway is mine to use as I see fit but morally is it right to complain when I'm parking on the street sometimes? Also, I don't know if threatening to call the council was too much. Edit. I live in the UK so the council and police can be very slow about dealing with these things, although thank you for some of the advice as to how to approach it over here. It can be quite difficult to park over the drive as cars will often park right to the edge of the dropped curb, not to mention the neighbors seem to park more freely over the drive if I get into the habit of parking there. There are so many cars in the area it's almost impossible to keep a lid on it. Not the asshole you park on the street when you have an appointment specifically because he and others like him block your driveway. If they would stop blocking your driveway you could park in it. You've been there long enough for people to understand that it's a goddamn driveway just start calling it in every time and get them ticketed and or towed. Depending on what is the legal method in your area. It's illegal to block a driveway. Call the cops. Woman shrugging light skin tone I hate having to explain common sense to people, so I don't bother anymore. Call the police non-emergency line or a tow truck company every single time. This is totally unacceptable and illegal for a reason. Also, if you honestly have to question whether or not you're the ass in this scenario, you definitely need therapy. Are you a human or a doormat? Not the asshole call a tow truck, end of discussion. The entitlement some people have about parking is honestly insane to me. This used to happen to us. What we would do is park one car in the driveway and then the other car blocking our own driveway. That way we knew that no other vehicle could block us in and we could take street parking without feeling bad about it. If somebody else blocks you tow. If it makes you feel better put up a sign that says towing is enforced. People should know that you can't block someone else's driveway. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. It is your driveway. No one should be blocking it. As for you parking on the street does your car take up someone else's space? Just curiosity. Because if not, that should not be problem either. Not the asshole it's either call the council or call the tow company. Let the council know it's an issue.
Ask how they want it handled, because you are at the point you'll just have the car towed it's an ongoing problem and have missed appointments because of it. If they don't know it's an issue or how bad the issue is, they can't address it. I would start parking in your driveway and if someone is blocking it, whether you have an APPT or not, tow it. You have left enough notes and warnings, have lived there long enough they should know better. If you're in the UK, call the council and get them to sort it. It's illegal to park in front of a driveway with a dropped curb if the driveway is registered. Is it registered? Not the asshole either way, only asshole park in front of someone's driveway. Am I the asshole for not buying my husband cigarettes? I, 27 female, work a low-income job. My husband, 29 male, doesn't work and hasn't for six months. For our whole relationship I've been the main one earning income, except for when he does sporadic under-the-counter jobs and last year when he started working for his family member when I lost my job. I was unemployed for six months, but was receiving unemployment and watching our child while he worked. I didn't mind being the only one working when he was watching our child, but our child is now in school. For the past six months he's played video games night and day and barely contributed to household chores and child-related responsibilities. He has started learning to cook more recently. With that background out of the way, I have direct deposit and get my check deposited in the an account that we can both access and use. It is currently empty. He is out of cigarettes. I had $60 of cash I received as a present that I hid. I was keeping it in case of emergency like running out of food or gas. He tore apart the house yesterday looking for money to buy cigarettes. He found my hidden money I hadn't told him about. He's very irresponsible with money and I can't save any if he knows about it so I lied and said I didn't remember the money was there because I knew he would get mad if I didn't buy him cigarettes. This was yesterday night. I told him he couldn't use the money for cigarettes, but he had found enough change and a coupon to buy a pack. Before he returned the money to me, he used part of it to buy Kratom even though I told him he couldn't use my money. This morning I woke up and he makes me food and a drink. This is unusual. He then tells me he stayed up all night last night playing video games and that he's out of cigarettes and asks me for my cash to buy another pack. I tell him no. He then says that I'm not doing anything with the money, didn't even know it was there, because I was afraid to tell him I had cash all along and hadn't bought him cigarettes, and get paid tomorrow. I tell him no, that I'm tired of every time I get money as a present that it ends up getting used on necessities and cigarettes for him. The previous month I gave him my birthday money to get medicine for our son which he ended up not needing, so he used it to buy cigarettes without asking me, but that he uses his to get things for himself. He freaks out, starts yelling and calls me a bitch. We argue and I yell that I'm tired of him not contributing to our family. He says he's leaving me and calls his dad to pick him up. His dad tells him to rethink things and he just texted me that he's calmed down and is in his words, a shithead. Was I wrong to not give him money for cigarettes when he's withdrawing? Am I being controlling by telling him he can't buy certain things? What should I do? Edit. I also didn't work for six months last year. I'm conflicted on judging him for not working for the same period of time. I know he struggles with depression and so do I, so I can understand how this can affect motivation. He keeps telling me that he's looking for work or has jobs lined up, but it always seems to fall through. It feels wrong to leave, right when he's starting making steps towards improvement. Edit. I'm strongly considering leaving the relationship, but I can't get a hold of my therapist to talk it out. Not the asshole. My husband, 29 male, doesn't work and hasn't for six months. He's played video games night and day and barely contributed to household chores and child-related responsibilities. He tore apart the house yesterday looking for money to buy cigarettes. He's very irresponsible with money. Before he returned the money to me, he used part of it to buy Kratom even though I told him he couldn't use my money. Eu, This dude's 29? What the high holy hell compels you to be in a relationship with this person? Am I being controlling by telling him he can't buy certain things? He has no job. He literally can't buy anything. Not the asshole for sure. Your husband is financially, emotionally, and verbally abusing you, op. He is the controlling one, not you. What are you doing with this joker? Not the asshole. It's one thing for your husband to blow his own paycheck on cigarettes. He doesn't have the right to blow yours when all he's doing is collecting unemployment. Emo. This marriage needs a shotgun divorce. One where your family strongly encourages hubby to leave, file for divorce, and not demand alimony, custody, or visitation access.
Not the asshole you need to talk to him about many things. Responsible use of money is a good place to start. If he's not going to grow up and start adulting maybe it's time to rethink your relationship. Not the asshole. Why are you with this guy? You are too afraid to tell him that you have your own money and won't buy him cigarettes. This isn't a healthy relationship, it's him taking advantage of you. You are not responsible for buying this guy anything. I'm sure you don't want him around as a role model for your kid either. Please don't let him back, you deserve better and frankly you don't need him for anything. What are you getting out of this relationship? What's the point in staying with him? Update. Am I the asshole for denying my 7-year-old food? I wanted to share an update on the situation. I appreciate a lot of you taking the time to respond and give me some perspective. I first wanted to clarify a few things that came up a lot. The medication he is on was prescribed by a specialist, not his pediatrician. I also made a big mistake with his height. He was 4.1 at last 6-year-old physical. He is certainly taller but I am not sure how much. He is overweight but not obese in my opinion. He doesn't have rolls or man boobs to give a better idea, just thicker all around. He is an active kid and a picky eater. The first thing I did the next morning was to apologize to my son. I told him I was wrong to say no to giving him food when he was hungry. I explained going forward that after meals he can have a healthy snack when hungry and he must drink a full glass of water to get more if he was still hungry after the snack. We also agreed bagels and salami after meals will not be an option and he understood. That night after dinner he was hungry and asked for salami. I said we agreed not to do that and while he was upset at first we came to an agreement of a glass of water and celery, too, with cream cheese. He drank and ate and asked for seconds which I gave him. That was it for the night. I also spoke with my wife and apologized for not being on the same page and saying no. I told her the plan and she was on board. I also called his pediatrician and we have a telecall tomorrow, prior to his checkup, to voice our concerns. While I did not like some comments about my kid's behavior, I understand this is Reddit and accepted them with a grain of salt. My kid does have anger issues but he is a great kid when things are good. I don't expect people to understand it from a Reddit post as opposed to being with him 24-7 for 7 years. We are committed to finding him the best care regardless of cost. Thanks again. Edit. Spelling and grammar. Edit 2. One thing I should have added that came up a lot is the misconception that he gained weight for a year and we did nothing about it. That isn't the full story and I should have explained better. Towards the end of 2020 school year his pediatrician put him on meds for ADHD. We both thought he had it. The meds actually made him lose a lot of weight to a point he was skinny. He was worse behavior-wise on the ADHD meds than off. We quickly realized this was not the correct diagnosis and took him off. While we found new doctors to diagnose and prescribe, two three months off everything, he got back to his normal weight plus a bit more due to being home and eating out of boredom and not being active as he would be if camp wasn't cancelled, COVID. Once he was diagnosed properly he was put on meds that helped his behavior but side effect was eating all the time. The weight gain was in 3-4 months and it was discussed with his doctors but we continued with the meds that were helping. Two weeks ago we brought up his weight and knew we wanted to change the meds. He is fully on the new meds as of Sunday, phased out old. And we are seeing if there will be a change in eating habits. I think your son is lucky to have you as a dad. And from what you write, I think you are lucky to have him as your son. Great update. Just wanted to say, maybe not celery at bedtime as it is a diuretic. Essentially makes you pee a lot. Tears of joy. Veggies are a good choice. Carrot, peppers and hummus? I hope you talked to your wife before you told your son what the plan was going forward and not after as your post suggests. You're a good parent. I have the opposite as to where my son doesn't eat enough and he is very small for his age, 11, and his ADD medication makes him especially not want to eat, which we were warned about. My son gets irritated that I make him eat, but his pediatrician says he has too. It is tough parenting huh? But so many rewards. Keep up the good work, only you know your son and his needs. This is a great outcome op. I have a similar arrangement with my kids' fruits, veggies and healthy fats are all, anytime snacks, that they can eat as much as they want of, anytime, without asking. We keep a bin of these prepped and pre-portioned snacks in our fridge and a list of what is an, anytime, snack on the fridge door. It's been great for them in terms of regulating cravings versus bored snacking. They're trying new fun veggies and fruits, and I never have to feel bad about their snacking. You sound like a great dad. Good job.
You handled it well. I would suggest sitting down with your son, and wife, and coming up with a list of acceptable snacks. I did this for my seven and nine-year-olds, and made sure all acceptable snacks are accessible to the kids without adult assistance. I printed the list and posted it in the kitchen so they can look at it at any time. It has helped them become more independent and a lot less whiny about snacks. Sounds very similar to my kiddos. My son was actually failure to thrive at 12. COVID happened and he is now considered overweight. Lots more issues like you mentioned but. I don't go into more details because it's Reddit, but you sound awesome and I'm hoping everything starts heading the right direction. Slightly smiling face. Am I the asshole for yelling at my dad for not telling me about his boyfriend? Throwaway account. Sister knows Maine. I know the title sounds bad but hear me out. Long post. TLR at bottom. I, 16M, made a mess of everything, but I feel like I'm justified. My sister, Wendy, 16F, feels different. Quick background. I got kicked from the track team because my grades dropped too low. After getting lectured by my dad, 36M, he started trying to find me a tutor. So far three tutors have given up on me. My dad's favorite is my sister. I mean, I get it. Straight a student, nice, pretty, never gotten detention, yada yada. She looks and acts like a younger version of my dad. I'm the complete opposite. They always tell each other everything, so I'm usually out of the loop until the very last minute. Don't get me wrong, he's a great dad. A lot of people have it worse. I just know I'm not top priority and that sucks sometimes. Story. I started seeing, Michael, 34 to 36 ish probably, M, last month as a tutor. My dad said he was an old friend of his. I expected to hate him and for him to realize I was hopeless. But he was actually kinda cool. Instead of studying immediately, he wanted to talk. Get to know me. I told him about track and field and my music collection. I'm a huge fan of old music. I got this awesome, giant poster of Diana Ross, and a big CD collection, a lot of Olivia Newton-John and Billy Joel, to name a few, and of course Diana Ross, the coolest. I also got this wicked George Michael jacket that I wear everywhere. We also talked about my family for a bit, he seemed to really like my dad. Eventually after about a month or so of this, Mike came over for dinner. He brought me a Cindy Lauper CD, and brought Wendy a poster of this anime character with demon eyes and pink hair and horns. She got super excited. So, after dinner, Michael and Wendy went upstairs so he could help her hang up her poster. Then my dad wanted to talk. He asked what I thought about Michael. I said he was cool and was in the middle of explaining what I was studying with him, Hamlet, when dad dropped the, we're dating, bombshell. My brain short-circuited for a second as all the pieces flew together. It's like Mike was only nice to me so my dad would be happy. I asked for how long and he said a couple months. I asked why he was telling only me, and he said Wendy already knew. That was a kick to the stomach. A huge yelling match occurred. Mike came down looking embarrassed and left. I do feel bad about that. I like Mike, and upon reflection I think he and my dad are good together. I haven't seen my dad this happy in a while. I'm not mad that they're together, I'm mad everyone lied to me. Later Wendy came in my room and called me an asshole. We had an argument. Mean words were exchanged. My dad arrived and surprise surprise, took her side. After more screaming, I locked myself in my room. Wendy and dad ganging up on me I'm used too, but I don't want Mike to hate me. Too long did not read. My dad and my sister both were lying to me and I got mad when I found out. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole in my opinion as an outsider, but please communicate to your family just why you are upset. Tell them that it's not just about not knowing your dad was dating someone, you are upset that your sister knew before you for months, and is way closer to your dad, leaving you out of the family dynamic a lot. You are upset over all the other little things you've been left out of and this was just the straw that broke the camel's back, and you feel they waited too long to finally let you in on everything and ostracizing you. I don't think you are. It makes sense why you're hurt. Mike might not have, only, been nice to you for your dad. Maybe he just is nice, and obviously that would be good. But it was shitty of your dad to pretend like Mike was a guy who was there to be your tutor. That kind of deception in parenting pisses me off. I experienced some of it myself. Definitely not the asshole. Not the asshole on this one. You're a teenager who feels like the odd one out because you get treated differently to your sister. Your anger and outburst makes total sense. You were lied to by your dad, your sister and by Mike, this new adult who lied to you from the second you met him. 
There are going to be some real trust issues from this. But you won't be able to make this clear until you are calm. Tell your dad you are sick of being treated differently. You are angry at being lied to not angry because he is dating someone. Not the asshole. They hid it from you, and it's concerning how matter-of-factly you talk about your sister being the favorite. There's a bad dynamic here, and while you can certainly influence that dynamic, it doesn't sound like you created it. I suggest you show them this post honestly, or perhaps an edited version. It's clear that you don't have any issues with your dad's relationship with Mike, you just have issues with your dad's relationship with you. Look into therapy to process this, and especially family therapy. Not the asshole. You feel betrayed. Like maybe your dad got Mike to tutor you just because he was dating him. You trusted this man as a tutor and friend. Your dad used that to his advantage and wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Now you aren't sure you can trust Mike or your dad anymore. Not the asshole you are right to feel angry at your dad constantly playing favorites. You need to tell him that when everyone calms down. Not the asshole. I think those who are voting otherwise are forgetting that the reason you are upset isn't just because you weren't told, but rather because you weren't told and your sister was. You certainly could have handled this much better. Screaming is not a productive way to handle feeling sad, but you're still a teenager and emotions can be overpowering. Talk to your family. Tell them how you feel about being left out. Tell them that's what was so upsetting for you. I would apologize to your dad for yelling, but make sure that you emphasize how this pattern of you being the odd one out has been affecting you. I hope that you and your family can resolve this in a way that leaves everyone feeling better. Not the asshole. It sucks to be the last one to know something, especially when it involves two role models that you thought you were sharing things separately with, but weren't. It's probably hard to know what Mike knew before he started tutoring you, and how much he pretended to learn to get in your good graces. I'd be livid too, but definitely do give them a bit of a break on this. They sound like decent people who made a silly error in judgment.